I am feeling really good this morning. I got a really good night's sleep. And I don't know if it's because the ground is kind of soft and sandy or because the temperature was just perfect last night. Uh, or maybe just feeling like I have a fresh start because I didn't leave any tracks behind me. But whatever the reason, I slept really great. I'm feeling really great today. And I, I got up and I did do a little bit of checking around in the area. And it seems like this is a vacation town, a vacation community. We, we are near the beach right here. Uh, and as far as I can tell, there's no one here. I, I didn't see any cars. I didn't see any tracks from anybody around here. And I'm not sure why that is. I, uh, well, it, <laughs> it might have something to do with this uh, up there, possibly. I, uh, I don't know whether that's been here since day one or whatever, but I mean, it's been here since I got here. And uh, yeah, so, but whatever, you know, I mean, I, I, I've had a lot more trouble with like a-hole people since this thing began than, than these guys. So if that's keeping people away, you know, that's great because there are a lot of resources here which are ripe for the picking. Uh, and, you know, there's uh, crustaceans, fish, and, uh, you know, fresh water is going to be a little bit of a challenge perhaps. But, uh, you know, I'm overall just really psyched. And it's great to have this place to myself. I mean, that's what they always say. You know, if you're going to go to the beach, you don't go on Labor Day or Memorial Day. It's like you wait for an alien invasion you know, <laughs> to clear out the crowds a little bit, and uh, and that's the way you do it. So, I'm at, I'm psyched. I'm psyched. Um, and the only again, the only thing I really have to work on is just fresh water resources because the water here is salt water, and you know without fresh water, none of this awesome stuff is going to seem all that rosy in in pretty short order. So, priority number one right now is to get some uh, some fresh water going. And I think I have the tools and more importantly, the know-how to extract fresh water from salt water. One of the easiest ways to collect fresh drinking water in an area that has a lot of salt water is to create a solar still. And that's what I'm gonna be doing right here in front of me. I found this nice sandy area that's easy to dig. And the idea of a solar still is that you create a pocket of humid, moist air you know, under the ground you create a membrane on the top that'll allow sunlight to come in, warm things up, humidify things. The water vapor that evaporates from what's underneath there uh, condenses on the plastic surface, runs down to a point, and then you catch it into a, uh, you know, some kind of a reservoir. In this case, I'm going to be using the one container that, that I have with me. So uh, I'm going to be putting that together right here in front of me right now. Uh, the first thing you need to do is to dig the hole, and I don't have a a shovel or anything with me so I've got this stone it's a nice kind of fits in my hand pretty well it's good for digging you might say well why don't you just you know it's sand you can just dig with your hands but I don't know what's down here there could be anything from you know sharp rocks to broken glass and the last thing you want to have in a situation like this is to have a big cut on your hand that gets infected you know that's not something you want to mess with so I'm gonna be careful I'm gonna use a digging stone dig down here and what I want to do is I want to be uh, digging this thing down about three feet wide and to get down into some of the, the more uh, moist ground underneath. I'm digging here and, uh, and already I'm starting to see that the ground is getting moister as I go down. It's very powdery on top, but as I go down here, it's getting more, more and more moist, uh, you know, just going down. So there's a lot of moisture here that's ready to be extracted, but it's just so diffuse I can't, you know, I can't drink it right now. So it needs to be collected. What I've got going on right here would almost be sufficient in and of itself. And I'm gonna make it a little bit larger. I'm gonna get those walls up. Because one thing that you want to make sure that you're doing is that you don't have water, uh, I'm sorry, air intruding underneath and evaporating away your, your water moisture and carrying it out. So you want to have some nice, nice decent walls around it and create a, a very closed environment. And the more surface area that you can expose down here, the more uh, opportunities for uh, evaporation that are going to happen down there and, uh, and the more water you're going to be collecting. Okay, this is looking pretty good to me. What I'm going to do is just sort of smooth out these walls here. So I can have a nice even ring. Uh, the next step is to take my plastic sheet. Now this used to be a plastic bag that I, uh, I just cut up here. I always keep plastic bags in my bug out bag. Plastic bags are just really useful for all sorts of things. I destroyed this one in order to turn it into just you know a sheet of plastic. It's important that it's clear. I, I, I mean, you could do it with an opaque 
a, a bag too. But what's great about it being clear is that it lets the sunlight through. So it's going to heat up everything that's down in this uh, in this pit. But before we put the, the plastic bag on top, what I want to do is I want to add a lot of moist material. Now I said there's already a lot of moisture down in the ground, and that, that that's great, but why not help it along? And what I have here is I've got just a branch. So I'm going to take this branch and take all these leaves off, and I'm going to do them individually, one at a time. And the reason I'm not just going to shove the whole branch in is I want to be able to have control over everything that while it's down in this pit. The last thing you want to have happen is you don't want to have your plastic sheet collecting moisture and have one of these leaves touching it because as the, as the moisture runs along the plastic sheet instead of dripping into the cup it'll go right down along the leaf and you know get wasted it'll go well it'll get re-evaporated later but it's you're, you're going to avoid collecting that so I'm going to take each of these leaves and individually be placing them down into the pit so that they're nice and flat what I also have is I also have just some of this mulch material I'm going to take that mulch material put it around there it's just some wet stuff I get it around there and now it's time for, oh, we actually have some rain here too. <laughs> if I put a hole in the middle of the plastic sill, it could also act as a rain catchment basin. So I, I gotta get going on this. I'm gonna take this thing, uh, lay it out on top here. I've got stones for all the corners. I'm putting the stones around the corners. And again, the goal here is you wanna have no air intrusion through here because you want to make sure that you get a hot, humid environment on the inside here and that that moisture is not escaping out. So we're putting these stones on all the corners like that, on the edges like so. All right, and I'm going to take the extra sand and just put it up on these edges to get a good, whoop, you don't want to have that in there, the sand up here to kind of hold the thing down everywhere that we can. All right, and the last step here is you want to have a weight in the middle, and the purpose of the weight is to hold the plastic down so that the drips are all coming to one point. And for a weight, I just use a stone, which I have right over here. So I'm going to use a stone, and I want to have the weight be directly over where the uh, the cup is. So I'm going to place this right here, and if I need to, you know, play with the plastic a little bit, I can do that. It looks like if I give a little more on this side, it'll help it to to drop down like that, and maybe pull here a little, like that, like that. All right. To me, this is looking pretty good right now. So the only ingredient that's missing at this point is some sun. We got some cloud cover right now. But the nice thing about this is that now that I've set it up, there's no more real work for me. Uh, the, all, all I really need to do is keep supplying it with water if I want to speed it up. And the way I would do that is just lift one of these corners and pour some water down the side just to keep it really moist down there. And the water that I'm putting in here I know is, is seawater. It's contaminated with salt. So that's why I can't drink it. In terms of polluted water, this type of device is not necessarily going to be all that helpful for people because there are lots of industrial pollutants that will also evaporate right along with the water and they'll also condense right on the top surface. And you could actually be intensifying pollutants in your water if there are you know, strange chemicals and whatnot in there. For me, I know that I just have seawater, it has salt in it, and I am going to be you know, removing that salt by leaving the salt behind because the salt does not evaporate and the water will recondense in the cup. But you have to know what you're dealing with uh, when you do this. Um, but the nice thing about it is that I, I don't really have to do anything. Now that I've set it up, I can add water, and then all I have to do is periodically come, and I take the cup, and I can drink out of it. It's going to work on its own, and, and I don't really have to be involved with it anymore after this. This location could work out really, really well. I've already gone around and I've 
Found a lot of mussels and clams and things like that for food. There are seabirds here, though at the moment I'm not sure how on earth I would catch those, but I'm sure I can figure something out. Uh, and even out here there are a lot of these boats, and you know, there's a potential I could go out to these guys and maybe there's some fishing gear on board, I could get one of them out. Yeah, I don't know about the motorboats, but the sailboat certainly get them out and, and do some fishing. This seems like it was some kind of like a small vacation community, and uh, as far as I can tell there's nobody here at the moment, but this could also be a potential bug out location for some people. Some people might be on their way here. So there might be competition for all these resources at some point, but at the moment... Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.